Ladies and gentlemen, I am sitting down with Michael Kong, CEO of the Phantom Foundation. Uh, we just got off stage and we are going to talk tech real quick. So Mike, if I could ask you a question. I know uh, one place that you guys have really focused on is security for the base chain or the base layer on, on Phantom as a, as a way of scaling while at the same time not sacrificing security. Can you talk just briefly on that for me? Yeah, for sure. So like, um, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation um, or, or, or the panel that we just did on Sage, um, essentially like this is a differentiator from us compared to like other layer ones and twos out there is that we don't want to sacrifice security for performance. And what that means is sticking really to like the base chain security, improving upon it and basically optimizing like um, uh, in terms of reducing storage or reducing like uh, the footprint for validators and nodes on the network while at the same time also increasing network throughput such that all applications that deploy in Phantom don't need to worry about, you know, creating their own application chain, don't need to worry about consensus, don't need to worry about the smart contract execution engine. All they need to worry about is building their application, launching it and growing it. And and, and that's it. We take care of everything else. And that's really what our primary tech, um, technological goals are at the foundation itself. So in one way that I know, you know, this has been talked about forever and I know it's something that's been a big focus for you guys. So the underlying chain, if you were to take the EVM layer off of Phantom, the throughput is very, very fast. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. So like in our experimentation, if you just do what are known as like account to account uh, transactions, right? Or basically transactions where you where you pay people, you transfer, for example, like one FTM to an, from one wallet to another, and, and that doesn't require um, the smart contract execution engine or what we call the Ethereum virtual machine, which is a way that you process smart contracts on Phantom at the moment, as well as Ethereum and other chains that are out there, your network throughput goes up by a factor of like at least 10, probably like close to like 15. Yeah. And so you can do far more transactions when you don't have the EVM. And that's for a number of like like technical reasons. And it's not just to do with the, the virtual machine or the actual execution of the, of the smart contract itself, but it also has to do with the way that the storing data on the blockchain works because it's actually quite complicated how it works. You know, it doesn't just get stored in like a disk, it gets stored in specific data structures. And so the way that you send and receive that data in order to maintain, you know, consensus across all nodes is what is like a real big bottleneck with the actual performance of a chain. And that is exactly why it's one of the bottlenecks that we're, we're aiming to solve right now. Amazing. And, and so we talk about the Phantom Virtual Machine all the time, uh, which is not a singular event, but kind of a long, rollout of multiple upgrades to the network essentially or in theory removing this evm bottleneck uh that seems to throttle some of the on all evm chains seems to throttle the throughput so can you describe like what what, what is that exactly uh what can people expect yeah so when you execute a transaction right or more specifically a smart contract transaction so for example like you interact with a DeFi application you submit a uh, transaction to do a swap, you swap from one token to another, it, you have to use um, like underlying technology to actually make that transaction happen, right? And that underlying technology is using what's called like EVM and interacting with storage on chain, right? So you know, you got to like retrieve like the storage data from like one wallet that you're swapping with and, and do the token swap. And then you got to write the update to make sure that, you know, you have that one token now in your wallet that you just traded for. And that the other party also has a one wallet of, or, or like one, one new token in their wallet that they previously didn't have, right? right. So there's a lot of like, um, like steps going underneath in order for the transaction to actually work. And so when you're processing a transaction, it's not just you submit it to the network and then it gets confirmed by nodes. What actually happens is you submit it to like one node in the network and then they have to go through this execution process and then they send it to the next node and they go through the execution process and then you keep doing that on repeat until you um, get to the consensus threshold, which for Phantom is like two thirds of the total validating power of the network. And so the reason why we're like optimizing this is well, uh, to our original point about baseline security, right? We don't want to like reduce the amount of like consensus that takes place, right? Because that's reducing security. So what we want to do is optimize other parts of the chain, right? Or, or other parts of the, the way that you execute transactions. And one of the big bottlenecks is that issue around like how the virtual machine actually executes um, the smart contract itself and, and the storage um, uh, and the storage system itself. So the way that we're working on that is twofold. We're building a new Phantom virtual machine or what is commonly known as the FEM. Mm -hmm. And that has a number of like significant improvements in there. It, it uses a lot of like um, optimizations of virtual machines that are very well known and very well researched um, non-blockchain and applying the same sort of logic 
uh, to the blockchain because we identified, okay, what, are the, what is the EVM lacking and what are the optimizations that we know already work outside of blockchain-based uh, virtual machines and how do we apply that to blockchain-based virtual machines or in this case, like the Vanta virtual machine. The other thing that we're working on is a storage solution, right? Because the way that the storage works at the moment to get a little technical is that it uses a tree-based structure called the merkle Patricia try. And basically, the way that you um, write and receive data, you have to like traverse this tree, right? And it requires a lot of steps. And obviously, as the tree gets bigger, in other words, as your database gets bigger or there's more data on chain, mm -hmm. the slower the process is, right? Because there's more uh, hoops you have to jump through. What we're planning to do, or what we've actually already done, is or what we have a prototype of, is replacing the MBT with what's called a flat storage. So it allows you to like write read and write data really, really fast, independent of the chain size itself. And that leads to many performance gains. And these are the same performance gains that I will be describing in my talk tomorrow, where I have specific nav, uh, graphs and numbers on the actual mainnet data itself. And I'm not just talking about, oh, like a few blocks in the mainnet. I'm talking about most of the mainnet, from, from the zero block to the 50 million block. And there's been 55 million blocks on the phantom chain at the moment. So we've tested these new developments that we've built on the vast majority of the mainnet data. So we are very, very confident that when we deploy on the mainnet, we'll have very similar results. Legend, legend. Mike Kong, ladies and gentlemen, CEO of the Phantom Foundation. If you're around tomorrow, tune in for his talk. It's going to be legendary. We'll catch you soon.